one. Welcome to Wayne's World and Kelly. Where are you? Today's oh, it's sponsor awesome. is uh, Warrington Toyota in Warrington, Virginia. And what's going on with you there, champ? Okay, so as you know, and I'll, I want to elaborate more, uh, mm -hmm. one of my best friends of 25 years, Cliff Wynn, passed away of a massive heart attack last week. And it was definitely one of the worst phone calls I've ever received. Okay. And, and it was his son calling me who's, you know, he calls me Uncle Kelly. He's my nephew. Um, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not some kid, you know, I've, I've known this kid all of his life. And so I drove up yesterday after meetings, I drove in through the night, stayed in some podunk quality and that was extremely clean. And, um, just across the border of Virginia. And then I was shooting up here. I'm like, I got to find somewhere at four o'clock. So I worked for Miller Toyota, the owner of Warren Toyota, Warrington Toyota back in the late eighties. And his son, who I knew when he was, you know, at 14, I think is when I first met him, is the general manager and part owner of this dealership. I think he's part owner. He should be if he isn't. So Jeff, take care of your boy. Um, but it's their second car dealership they have up in Northern Virginia, both Toyota. And um, so I pulled in and I said, hey, I need to borrow a, an office. <laughs> so, they, you know, hey, come on in, Kelly. I haven't seen you, you know, in four or five years. But, um, you know, this is this this family and this business is where I worked for IBM back in the 80s. I learned most of the good things that I learned from Miller Toyota and from being in the car business in general. I've got friends, a buddy of mine that I worked with years ago um, that I knew, I think, I guess we met at IBM in the 80s. We both worked at Miller Toyota back in the late 80s. He sold his first business for a ton of money. When he was like in his early 20s, he developed a digital um, dashboard. He and a okay. couple of his buddies, and they sold it, I think, to GM or something for crazy money. So, I mean, uh, Jeff Bailey, if you're watching incredible entrepreneur he'd called me up monday night we catching up we talked you know every six months or so cliff son calls me up the next night dylan and and and, and i thought he was telling me about his wedding that was going to happen with monica who we all love and instead you know he gave me that terrible news so it's bittersweet so i thought we should talk about relationships friendships um and just, you know, kind of like, you know, dig a little deep into our alpha male personalities and, and, and sort of do that for our conversation today. Unplanned, untalked about, I said nothing to you about it. Um, but I just, you know, you know, it's just, you know, everyone's, you know, a lot of my friends, I've, I appreciate everybody's reached out to me, phone calls, texts, emails, PMs, IMs, whatever we call those things on, you know, through Facebook and stuff. Um, and I appreciate it. And, it was, and it's, it's just amazing. And a lot of people from up here, you know, got in touch with me and, you know, but I'm, I'm sad, of course. I mean, this is one of my best friends. We talked all the time and we've, I mean, we had great stories together for 25 years. We watched our kids grow up. We went through divorces together. We went through new relationships together and we always would enter the, end our calls. I love you, brother. Yep. We're two alpha males. And, you know, and like you, you and I are alpha males. Most of my friends are alpha males. I don't really do well with beta males. Um, right. And, and I don't, I don't like to call them alpha women. I like to call them strong women and empowered yeah. women. You know, and I like them better. Um, I, I love everybody, but you know what I mean? I and, do. But I just, I was so grateful because we had talked the week before. I actually was going to see him July 4th weekend and then we changed plans. And I was going to come up and see him in August. The guy was healthy. He had had heart issue over a decade ago. So then I, I as you process it, we were on borrowed time with, with Cliff. Thank God we had those extra 10 or 12 years, whatever it was from his heart attack. I used to watch him take all these pills, teased him shockingly. Um, but, you know, he's taking great care of himself. He looked great. He was in a great place in his life. He was a master at sales. He cared about his clients. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, the great salesmen aren't the salesmen that are hustling people. It's the people that truly care and do a great job. 
Absolutely. And for 32 years, he was selling um, a lot to the elderly for ramps and for um, chairlifts, you know, for people that live in two story houses and got into elevators for whether it's somebody's age. And then they, they got the business grew a lot from all the wealth in the Northern Virginia area of these houses with these, you know, glorious elevators. But he truly, truly cared about people. And I've got a lot of great friends and, you know, you're one of my newest best friends that I've had. And I put you on the same level as him, but in a shorter period of time. And we're just so blessed to have such incredible relationships that tomorrow will be a celebration of his life. And I'll miss him. But man, was I fortunate to know that guy for 25 years. I mean, you know, at the church, I can't tell 95% of our stories because unfortunately we weren't Christians when we were friends for part of that time. But we both accepted Jesus as our savior. I know where he is, but boy, I got some good stories. <laughs> I mean, some of the crap that we would do to each other was just relentless and <laughs> it was fun, you know, and, you know, and we played together, we, we, we shared a lot of things together, but having those relationships and developing several of them over the years, um, you know, that's one of the other advantages of our wisdom is our, in our experience is developing those great relationships with really great people. And you really do have to call it a celebration of life, although he was going to be 58 this year. You know, talk about, you know, way too young. And right. then, so I'm talking to Chris Kronzer, who, a uh, competitor of, Warren, of Warrington Toyota, um, he's uh, the general sales manager up at um, this little company called Coons, Toyota in Arlington, Coons spelled differently than ours. They've got, I don't know, 50, 100 dealerships, but him and Walter Johnson, another good friend of mine, run that place. And we were, he called me a couple nights ago and we were talking and he said, you know, we're at that age. I know you're not quite up to that age, but you're getting close, but it's going to start happening more and more. And then eventually the call will be about us one day, but, you know, it just makes you know, I think that you and I share that embracing every single day and, and doing everything we can every single day. And we do live our lives, you know, dance like, you know, nobody's watching or everybody's watching because um, you danced. <laughs> I think we're going to forget about that one. We were watching. Remember like, when, you, when, you, when you did this move? <laughs> right. Yeah, you did it better than me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was so incredible. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and I, I'm so grateful that you know, my friendship with Cliff was like that. And my friendship with you and so many others is like that. We're, we're, we're just going out there and we're living. We're not just sitting, you know, watching things go by. We're, we're, we're having an impact. And, you know, and I, you know, Cliff had an incredible impact in my life. And I, you know, and so, so did Jeff Abel, who is Daniel's son and all these other people, Jeff Bailey, all these great people I've been around. I've taken pieces of them that they've taught me on how to be a better person, a better salesperson, and just a, you know, a better parent, all that stuff. And, you know, it's, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, as opposed to just, you know, collecting a paycheck and, and watching life go by and then spend the rest of your night, you know, down in, you know, alcohol or and all the other crap that people do. I just don't get it. So, so that's my opener. So what do you think? You want to do something well, different? Well, no, I mean, just so, what what's the big takeaway for you on this if you would have to say it in in a couple sentences for you what's your big takeaway kelly coon um geez i want to do this um just live you know and, and, and don't wait till tomorrow amen yeah i uh I have an, an, an app that I have on my phone that anybody can get and it's free and it's called We Croak. And every day I get four messages from them and the heading says, don't forget you are going to die. And then I get, I get a quote and today's right. one that I got is spring water in the green creek is clear moonlight on cold mountain is white silent knowledge. The spirit is enlightened of itself. Contemplate the void. This world exceeds stillness. 
I'll get some heavy ones like that and I'll get some lighter ones. That's However, deep, but, but it's awesome. Well, th- yeah, because th- this is a daily reminder for me that we are all on the clock. Now, I guess maybe you can't get any more morbid than getting a personal message from wecroak.com to give yourself a reminder. So I like it. I don't live in the past. I don't think a lot about the future. I live in the moment. And it's always on my mind, though. I've had several friends that are not here anymore. And I got one on the clock right now. And so I saw him a couple weeks ago. And all we did for two hours is laugh. He didn't want to go down any kind of road about where he's at right now or what he is facing because he is on the clock. But man, we sure had so much fun together. And when we both parted ways, we said we loved each other. I mean, him and I have been friends since grade school. So to be able to hold on to these relationships for as long as you can, um, it's just a reminder of what it was like in the past, what it's like right now, and what it's going to be like for everybody in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. It is. What's, what's also amazing is none of this was planned. And the fact that you were able to mention all of that, you know, kind of shows me that we're living, you know, we're ready for anything. And anything. we've done it. We've done so much, but there's so much more for us to do. Um, right. You know, I got people of my age, because of course I'm older than you and, and I'm taller than you. So <laughs> stand up. Let's see. see how much taller I am. How do you like the shirt? Oh, I love that. I love that advertisement. Hey, listen, guys, the Terminator, get a grip, use the clip. Thank you, sir. If you want to save tens of thousands of dollars on your projects when you're doing a vinyl siding replacement, you got to get the clip. And if you don't know about it, you're missing out. Terminatorclip.com and the savings comes in productivity. That will be my... Shameless plug for right now, but I don't mean to take the light away from you. And no, because I pity, I pity the fool that doesn't use the clip. <laughs> Better get a grip. <laughs> get a grip. Get the clip. <laughs> so how long is your stay there? Then I know that you said you have the funeral tomorrow. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have the celebration of life tomorrow. And just yep. sort of like how I got a little choked up a few minutes ago. I can. I I've been on TV. I've been on movie sets. I've do this silly thing, which, you know, we get seven people watching. I spoke once in front of 34,000 people and it was the coolest thing here. My voice on the microphone. I've done all those things. There's one thing I can't do. And that's talk at a funeral. And I was sharing that with somebody a couple weeks ago. Really? And I'm hoping they don't ask me tomorrow, but if they do, and I don't know if I can do it. I honestly, I don't know if I can do it. I got choked up a few minutes ago and I'm not even there. I had... you can do it. I, if, if you have to, I had, I had backup for, oh. for, for one that I had to do. And I didn't think I could get through it. Um, we'll talk a little more off the clock on the particulars of what that entailed, but you I'm not can, envisioning everybody in church wearing underwear. So don't even that, ask me that. that. That doesn't even, that would be that. so inappropriate. Everything comes from the heart and your friend, does, but your friend, if you are asked, would would appreciate that. Certainly his family would. And I don't think you would have any problem doing that because you, you owe him that if asked. I, I owe him nothing. I gave him life. No. Um, <laughs> I know. I, I mean, the best thing I could do is go up there and tell. I try to tell the most inappropriate stories about him and I. I mean, I was there was there was one time where. Um, he and his his boss Scott and they'd been friends I think in school and they moved down from Michigan. Oh my God, they were all things Michigan. Oh, it's disgusting. Um, <laughs> and I, I love the passion that different people have. Just in DC, what what the heck do we have to be passionate about? Yeah, right. It just wasn't. It's not the same. So anyway, it's like I can't remember. We we're out celebrating Scott's birthday or something, but it was definitely one of those nights where we had a really good time right and we pull up and and so um they live three four doors down from us from 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 my place right so scott's pulling up pulling up to drop us off and uh you know and they're and let's go be real quiet i don't like dana and the kids up you know or, they, or dylan up you know you gotta be really quiet I, i'm i'm in the, i'm gonna be in trouble i go okay 
And I, and I think we had another guy who was an FBI agent who lived across. Here. I think he might've been with us too. So we had like three of the four of us in the car were, were neighbors. That's two, three in the morning. I thought it would be a good time to test out the Forerunner Limited horn. <laughs> so I'm laying on the horn. Of course. I would expect the entire neighborhood. And I mean, to this day, I think it was funny. And I, 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 I think to this day, Dana really questioned if she liked me or not as a, as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm sure we probably told Dylan that story over the years. But, um, you know, it's I, I, I just don't know if if I could get up there and, and do it. I, I, I'm, and this is just me. We, we talked before about getting out of your comfort zone. I said, I, don't, I didn't know where my, out of my comfort zone is. That's where it is. That and jumping out of a plane. And right. I'd probably rather jump out of a plane and I'm not doing that. So we'll see, but I, I don't want to dwell on that. I'd rather dwell on the, on the living and on, on, on life. And then if he was out skiing a couple months ago in Colorado. He was okay. out on the beach almost every weekend down in North Carolina, you know, just was always living life. And we were, I mean, we just, he loved it. One of the reasons I moved to Florida is I hate snow. Yeah. People from Michigan and people like you, you've got something nutty in your head. You love that crap. My no, I don't. starts thinking about it. Oh, good, good. I Thank never got, I, I never got used to it. I, I grew up in Wisconsin and I've been here since 1990 when I finished college, but it's a myth when people tell you that you get, you get used to it. No one ever does. It's, but it's psychotic. Cliff loved his life in Virginia. He, he was there here more than he was there. But okay. they used to, he and Dylan, Dylan was his clone. I mean, he's very much, he has the wonderful heart of his mom. But he was, he was all Cliff. And man, they loved Michigan and they loved freaking cold weather. And when it snowed, they would fight over who got to dig out the cars. Like, what is wrong with you people? They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, drove Jeeps, you know, <laughs> that right. whole nine yards. <laughs> right. I've got, making... got an all wheel drive with low profile tires. <laughs> That's how much <laughs> I love the snow. <laughs> Sorry, I can't go north in the winter. My car won't go. And it's all wheel drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think you know that. When I say goodbye to the Midwest, other than going to see my clients, which I love and adore, and I, I, I will always be in touch with them, um, the biggest thing I'm not going to miss is is being cold. And I, I can never it depend. I can never put enough layers on because one of the secrets about being cold, you may or may not remember, is kind of once you're cold, it's like you can never really get warm. Right. You know what I mean. And and it, whatever, but I was yeah. there seven years ago, and I still haven't warmed up from it. Up in your <laughs> part of the world, I was like, it was zero degrees for a week. That's as warm as it got. Zero. Did you come for the Super Bowl? I was no. I showed up the day after the Super Bowl for a work event. That's right. Yeah, okay. it would have been nice to be there at the Super Bowl, but <laughs> okay. Was that downtown then? It was up in the Habit Trails. Yeah, downtown. And I yeah, the Habit Trails. Ever seen. Yeah, we and, talked and, about and everybody that. talked about the weather. That's all, that's all there is to talk about here. Well, all there used to be to talk about here. Um, some events that have happened have changed the conversation, but I'm sure you can always go back to the weather if you want. Yeehaw. But I was surprised. I really thought that that would, but everybody that lived there, that's what they talked about. I'm like going, this is normal for you. I can understand me mentioning it because it was much colder than I was used to. But the, the whole conversation from getting in the Uber car, getting out of the plane, the guy talked about cold weather. I, I walked maybe a quarter of a mile to a convenience store when I first got there. Yep. And I, I was so cold. I took an Uber a quarter mile back to the hotel. <laughs> it was Alpha been, males don't do that. Alpha and then males. I tipped the guy like 20 bucks. I felt so guilty. Alpha males don't do that. I, this one did. I was a cold <laughs> alpha male. <laughs> what was it, 20? 20 degrees? No, it was zero. No, it's yeah. zero degrees. Yeah, that's probably cold for somebody like you. For us, that's warm in January. So that's when you were there. No, well, February, because the Super Bowl is in February. It was, now, right? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, late January. But um, we got five more minutes. Do we have any more sponsors today, or is it just Miller Toyota Manassas and Warrington Toyota, Warrington, Virginia, where, oh, and of course, ABC. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the clip. And, and all the clip. Always LGC. 
Always LGC. How's it going over there, brother? Oh, I was just telling somebody how we are the premier owner's rep project management firm servicing high-rise condominiums in South Florida um, for the last nine months. We're, we're, we're all of it. <laughs> so when someone it says going great, we, we we're bringing on great people. I just interviewed a woman on the way up here. That was fantastic. I think she's going to join the team. Um, got another guy coming on board, um, two other guys. So, um, we're, it's, we're really, we're really growing and getting great projects and it's exciting. And, um, that's one thing that, you know, Cliff and I would, we were friends and we would talk about our family and we talk about our friends and we talk about golf and sports, but we also, we also had that camaraderie of sales and we'd always talk about, you know, what our numbers were and, you know, what was doing, you know, who, how, what did he was doing and working on. We were, we had, we shared some of the same clients in business. So we networked together. It was okay. just, it was, and it was fun. Cause it just like, when you and I talk, there's hard to tell, we, we enjoy it, what we do so much that oh, you yeah. can't, you can't, they, it all, it all transcends. Um, we're going to have um, Rudy from M2E on the show. Who's one of my competitors. He's an engineering group and now, yeah. and, and, and so is Falcon, which, my friend um, Sanisha is, is, is over there, um, and Sanisha is a great guy. And, and there's a bunch of other great engineering firms out there, so I don't want to get in trouble. But M2E also has project management, owners rep services, and Rudy and I are great friends. And I love that. I, I I think this re-solidifies what you and I talk about is just because we're competitors doesn't mean we're not friends. And because friendships at the end of the day are much more valuable. Cliff. And we all, as long as we're all doing better, whether it was Cliff and I in two different industries, but we shared some of the same clients. So we were always trying to elevate or um, you and I introducing people to each other um, or bringing people on our show to help them with their, with their business, whether I don't care if they're a competitor or not, as long as they're a really good competitor, you know, yep. I'm not going to sit there. I get really quiet, which is the only time I ever get quiet is if somebody brings up a competitor who I don't think is going to service the client very well. And if, I, that's the only, I try not to take anything personal. I got a bad 250, maybe even 200, depending on how many leads I get for us to be successful for our company and our, you know, and our employees and their families. Um, I don't need to bat a thousand, but I do for a few minutes when we don't get a deal and I'm afraid that they're going with somebody that's not going to do a good job for them. That's what bothers me. Yeah. I don't want to hear a call from them three to six months or nine months from now saying, can you take over the project? We made a, we, we, we want, a lot of times they won't say we made a bad decision back then. We, we want to go a different direction. For our level yeah. We want to go a different direction, like whatever. But I don't like that because then a lot of damage is done. And I just, I, I hate seeing money being wasted. And, you know, that's why I want people to find out about the clip if they're doing vinyl siding replacement, especially on a large scale, because the clip does such a phenomenal job compared to the old traditional way of how you, attach um, vinyl siding to a house. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, um, you and know, it's some, the truth. It's, I, at, I get it. I don't know jack about that stuff. Right. At, at some point, I think it would be fun to, to bring in my business partner on that. And then you bring your business partner on your company and we can talk about the industry, some of the things that we're doing. Um, I think that would be enjoyable for everybody to know because if they can learn from some of the things that we're doing, as lack of a better way of putting it, you know, startup companies to let them know that it's, it's rewarding, but it's very hard too. I mean, it's, sure. it's, it's all of that is real. You know, there's yeah. a reason why 96% of companies fail after five years because it's hard. And unless you have a passion, you are probably going to fail. And, and we both are very passionate about our businesses and about our friendships and everything, but we both hear that clock ticking because we want to get past that that five years yes sir <laughs> and you know it's unavoidable and we're, we're you know but i you know and, and george and james my two partners and you know our leadership team we we're all in and um sandy who's a phenomenal part she's she's the glue of our company we are always looking at what we're doing to do the best practices to do everything right because we it's not that we don't, we're not afraid of failing um, on, a, on a task, but we do not want to fail on this business. And we've really worked very hard with our business model, as you're doing with your business model, and as we're both growing, we're making good decisions, I think, because we're all wiser. 
oh, yeah. but it's but 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 you, but that five year mark is just so important. I know. And I really, I it just does not. Um, it, it there's never a time where I don't think about that. I'm having fun right. doing it. I know we're having fun doing business, but we're we also have to be serious about some of our business and knowing that. So, and I don't care if God takes me today or He takes me in 20 years. I, I'm going out strong. You bet. You know, and, and that's what Cliff did. And I, you know, I dedicate this show to him. Good. And I love him and I miss him. And I tomorrow's going to be tough. And I hope, uh, I hope I get through it. And, okay. uh, and I'm just so blessed to have him as a friend. And I'm, and I, and I love the world that we are able to share together with our friendships and everything. So, um, good way, good way to end it, my brother. Yeah. So, listen, I, I love you like a love brother. You too, brother. You're amazing. And I love almost everybody that watches this. I see some people that are not like them that much, but for the most part, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm excited next week. Uh, we got an exciting guest coming on. So uh, listen, guys, have a great week and keep dancing. And uh, next week, we're going to have, uh, you're going to do the tutu dance next week, right? Yeah, next week. Not now. Looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. All right, my brother. Talk to you soon. See you, my man.